and welcome to worship this morning. A special welcome to anyone visiting us here at St. John's. Also welcome to those who join us online uh, this morning for worship on this uh, chilly uh, but beautifully sunny day. It's a reminder that soon we will be uh, heading really into the summer, uh, God willing, and uh, we will enjoy that time. Just uh, two brief announcements before we begin. Um, I had some clarification. We will not move to summer worship hours next week, but it's the Sunday following Memorial Day weekend that we move to our summer hours. Uh, secondly, uh, today is the last formal day that Mark Nelson will be directing our choir. He's done it for a hundred years. <laughs> Wait, 125? No, uh, but uh, let's give Mark uh, and God thanks. We'll be having a special celebration on June 19th. On June 19th to, to celebrate Mark's ministry uh, with us. And so um, we are so grateful, though, Mark, for all you've done. 36 years, right? 36 years. Wow, that is a lot of pastors to have to tolerate. So thank you, Mark. Now I invite you to please stand as we begin our worship. Jesus is risen, alleluia. Christ is alive, alleluia. Christ is alive, alleluia. Jesus is risen, alleluia. We gather in the name of the eternal Father, the resurrected Son, and the promised Holy Spirit. Amen. And together we sing our gathering song, Christ has arisen, alleluia.
Our service continues with, the, with our confession. Let us confess our sin before God and one another. We take a moment of silence for our own private prayers of confession. Forgiving God, we spend so much of our time doubting you, doubting ourselves, failing to place our trust in you. Our lack of faith causes us to stumble, and when we fall, we fall far. Forgive us our sin and lift us so that we can use the challenge of carrying out your mission. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God is merciful and just. God offers us forgiveness to all who ask it. Receive now the entire forgiveness of all your sins and walk in the power of the Holy Spirit for the sake of Jesus. Amen. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Continue our service as we sing our song of praise, Alleluia, Jesus is Risen, verse 5 of hymn number 377.
And together we pray. God of grace, Paul encouraged believers to have courage and to live their truth. Grant us courage and a willingness to put you and others first. Amen. Please be seated and we say thank you again to the Chancel Choir for the gift of music this morning.
Good morning. The reading this morning is from Philippians, the first chapter. Paul and Timothy, servants of Christ Jesus, to all the saints in Christ Jesus who are in Philippi, with the bishops and deacons, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God every time I remember you, constantly praying with joy in every one of my prayers for all of you because of your sharing in the gospel from the first day until now. I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work among you will bring it to completion by the day of Jesus Christ. It is right for me to think this way about all of you, because you hold me in your heart. For all of you share in God's grace with me, both in my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. For God is my witness, how I long for all of you with the compassion of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer, that your love may overflow more and more with knowledge and full insight to help you to determine what is best, so that in the day of Christ you may be pure and blameless, having produced the harvest of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ for the glory and praise of God. I want you to know, beloved, that what has happened to me has actually helped to spread the gospel so that it has become known throughout the whole imperial guard and to everyone else that my imprisonment is for Christ. And most of the brothers and sisters, having been made confident in the Lord by my imprisonment, dare to speak with word, bear, dare to speak the word with greater boldness and without fear. Some proclaim Christ from envy and rivalry, but others from goodwill. These proclaim Christ out of love, knowing that I have been put there for the defense of the gospel. The others proclaim Christ out of selfish ambition, not sincerely, but intending to increase my suffering in my imprisonment. What does it matter? Just this, that Christ is proclaimed in every way, whether out of false motives or true, and in that I rejoice. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Debbie. And I want to invite the kids forward this morning to share with me a little message about our gospel. So kids, come on forward. Come and have a seat. It's good to see you. Good morning, good morning, good morning. How is everybody this morning? Thumbs up. That was kind of a quiet thumbs up, but you're, you're still good, right? So, you know, there's one thing I really like to eat for a snack, and that's Oreo cookies. You guys like Oreos? Do you like Oreos? Yeah? So I went to the store last night uh, and got some Oreos, and this is what I got. What is wrong? It's broke! I got a broken Oreo. I got this part, and this part, and this part, right? And they're supposed to what? Go together, right? It's important that they go together, so we take this part here, and this wonderful, gushy part should go right on top of that, right? And then this should go on top of that, right? You know what? They're kind of like a partnership, aren't they? Yep. Together they make an Oreo. Apart, they make two chocolate cookies and some fluff. This morning, we heard the Apostle Paul speaking to people in the church, and he thanked them. He thanked them for being his partners, for being his partners in ministry. And I kind of think of it like this Oreo cookie. You know, we're individual people, right? Like, you're you and I'm me, and they're them. But when we come together as one, and the Holy Spirit, that's the white stuff, binds us together, 
we become a really great sweet treat, don't we? Yeah. So when we are partners and tell other people about Jesus, we share the sweetness of Jesus' love with all sorts of other people. And that's really important, isn't it? That we share Jesus' sweet love with other people. So I want you to think about the fact that all of those people over there and all of you, you're one side of the cookie. And God's love given to us in the Holy Spirit is the, the thing that puts us together in the middle. And the other side of the cookie is everybody else. And we make a really sweet deal, don't we? This is a mega stuffed Oreo, by the way. Wouldn't it be really cool if I brought one to share with you? Yeah? Would you go get that basket over there for me? Awesome. We're going to pray first, and we're going to invite our friends to pray after us, and there is no broken Oreos in here. We're all held together really well. So let's pray. So if you repeat after me, and we're going to ask our friends to repeat as well. Dear Jesus, Jesus, thank you for binding us together together. and making us partners partners. in sharing your love. love. Fill us, Lord, Lord. with the sweetness of your spirit spirit. and and partner us with others as we tell your story. We love you, Jesus. Amen. So you all can take an Oreo cookie. And remember, the next time you have an Oreo, that you have partners in the gospel and that God keeps us together. And you can return to your seats. And at this point, I'd usually eat the Oreo cookie. (laughs) And then you'd have to look at my brown teeth for a while. So we're not going to do that. Please pray with me. Oh, good and gracious God, thank you for partnership ministries. Thank you for the fact that we walk together in faith. We are not lone rangers. We don't do it alone. But we do it with others. And your love comes and binds us together so that we would together proclaim your good news to all the world. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So, during the pandemic, I've heard this phrase come out, and I I just need to confess, I can't stand it. It's the phrase, you do you. You do you. It just has become an excuse uh, to let people do their own thing without considering the wholeness of the community, without considering uh, our interdependence with one another, and how important it is that, that we walk with and engage with one another. I would much rather change that phrase to we do we. That together, not independently, but together, we work to benefit one another. We are better together than we are separate. I can't imagine, for example, just eating all the chocolate of the Oreo cookies. It's better when the filling is in there and another cookie is alongside of it. We do we. The Apostle Paul this morning is writing to the church in Philippi. He's writing about his imprisonment. And the first thing he says to them is, I thank God every time I remember you in my prayers for your partnership in the gospel. Your partnership in the gospel. That is an incredible thing, isn't it? That we don't have to do faith on our own. 
We don't have to understand everything about God and the Trinity and redemption and salvation on our own. We don't have to serve on our own. We don't have to learn on our own. We don't have to worship on our own. We do it all together. And we are all knit together in this communion, this community of faith, this gathering of God's broken saints and gleaming sinners who are partners together in the gospel. Now think about what that means for a moment, that we are partners together in the gospel. Today, I've had at least 10 people ask me how our partner, Pastor Alex, is doing as he is recovering from COVID. That's partnership. That shows compassion and care for others. During Bible studies, I hear members of St. John's ask about how their neighbors are doing with whatever struggles are going on. That is partnership in the gospel. That is showing compassion to your friends and neighbors in Christ. And when we heard the news of Russia invading the Ukraine, people asked, when are we going to have something in the bulletin about that so we can respond, so we can help our neighbors that we will never meet or know? as they live amidst the horror of war. That is partnership in the gospel. You see, you and I, we're not lone rangers. We do not and cannot do it alone. Imagine what life would be like for the past 36 years if Mark Nelson wasn't directing our choir. We needed that partnership of Mark to come alongside of people and nurture their voices and give them a voice to sing their praises to God. Imagine, for example, if there weren't a long line of pastors that partnered with St. John's Lutheran Church to share the gospel in this community of Annandale and the surrounding area. We would have to be left to do it alone. Imagine if you didn't say yes to the promises of your baptism, which meant that you would gather with your friends and neighbors and strangers and even sometimes your enemies and share in learning God's word, eating the supper God has given us, and then being sent out those doors to go shape and influence and share the love of Christ with all people. Together, we do that. I love the fact that if you, I'll take a look at your bulletin for a minute. On the very top cover, it says, St. John's Lutheran Church, ELCA, with open arms to all, Together, everybody say it, together we live and share the love of Jesus. We don't do it on our own. Think about if you had to. It would be exhausting. It would be painfully exhausting. Imagine if you had to be the one who pulled together all of the worship and then only worshipped by yourself. Imagine if you had to be the one who prepared the Bible study, but when you sat down to open the Bible, there was no one else to tell you what they thought the Word of God was saying. Imagine if you had to go and do all of the visitation, calling on people who are ill or injured or grieving. It would be exhausting but we are in partnership together. We are committed to one another. 
We are committed to sharing the love of Jesus together. I think that's why Paul wants to talk about partnership with the Philippians. He saw that their ministry meant that he had partners walking alongside of him. Even when he was in prison, there were other people out doing the things that Paul needed to do. We found out here at St. John's, uh, in the midst of being short-staffed, that your church staff pulls together and does stuff that they are not qualified for. And we pick up loose ends to help one another in order to make sure that ministry happens. And guess what? It does. And then we trust the fact that you are loving and forgiving, and when we don't do it right, you don't go all up in arms, but you ask, how might I help? Or what do you need in order to do it better? Or to make it happen? I thank God for all of you, for your partnership, Your partnership, Paul says, in this sharing of God's love and grace. It's a great message for us to hear as we come to the end of the Easter season and are just on the precipice of moving into the season of Pentecost. That God calls us and gathers us together to be God's church with and for and to and on behalf of each other. Friends, you can do you if you want. But I would rather encourage you that we do we. We do we knowing that Jesus walks alongside of us. We do we knowing that Christ is there to encourage and to celebrate and to rejoice with us. We do we and we know that Jesus is there to weep with us, to grieve with us, to wonder with us, to to wrestle with us. We do we together with Christ. And the result is so sweet. And so good and so rich. Amen. May the peace of Christ, which calls us and gathers us and gifts us with his presence, be with you and with everyone else as we do this thing called church together. Amen. Our service continues as we sing our hymn of the day.
to you. Speak the peace you long to hear. I will weep when you are weeping, when you laugh, I'll laugh with you. I will share your joy and sorrow till we I invite you to please stand if you are able. As together we confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We pray for the church, the world, and for all of those who are in need. We give you thanks for your servant, Paul, who never allowed misfortune to win the day and never rested until he proclaimed the gospel to everyone he met. Give us zeal, energy, and spirit on behalf of Jesus mission. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. It is easy to second-guess the motives of others and assume we know who is genuine and who is less concerned about how the hows and whys of our brothers and sisters in faith and more concerned about the God that and more concerned about the gospel that is proclaimed. Risen Lord, hear our prayers. As spring bursts forth in the northern hemisphere, bring about renewal of our hearts as well, making them well-watered gardens where love abides and hope grows. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. Sometimes, it is the wounded among us who make the best agents of your healing. Use us all, shortcomings and all, to tend to your flocks and to spread the balm of your wholeness. Be especially with Glenn Rosenberg, Grenette Heidenreich, Lloyd Johnson, Gary Geisinger, Marilyn Nelson, Jim Foldenauer, Betty Nelson, Clayton Discrude, and Daryl Olson. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. We thank you, God, whenever we think of your faithful servants who carried your precious gospel throughout the ages. As their witnesses have blessed us, so make us a blessing for others. Today, we celebrate with those in our congregation who will soon graduate. We ask, Lord, that you may have imprinted upon their lives by our partnership here at St. John's and that they would carry your good news into all of the places that you are sending them. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. Gather our prayers spoken and spoken aloud 
and offered silently into your hands for the good of all your people, to the glory of Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated at this time we receive our morning offering. The Joyful Jar is also before us as we support our partners in ministry within our community. I invite you to please stand as we sing our offertory. before you, holy God. We ask you would bless them and use them for your glory. Even when we cannot see the ending of our efforts, we know that your spirit has the power to enter into hearts and transform lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take meat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after the supper, Jesus took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your love, teaching us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God are for the people of God. Here we are fed and nourished and brought together in partnership so we might share Jesus' love with one another. All are welcome. All is ready. All of you may come. Please be seated. As we receive communion this morning, uh, please come forward, uh, grab a cup or grab grape juice from the tray. Uh, and if you would prefer to receive a gluten-free wafer, please extend your index finger and uh, the server will extend the tray to you and you're to take the wafer uh, from the cup that is in the middle. If for some reason uh, you are uh, not comfortable coming forward for communion and would prefer uh, to commune in the pews or to commune when you return home, uh, there are elements in the back that you may receive and take with you in order to uh, share in this meal of God's grace. If you do so, please hear these words. The body of Christ is given for you, and the blood of Christ is shed for you. All is ready. All are welcome. We 
The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen us and keep us forever in God's precious grace. And together we pray. Risen Lord, you have fed us with the bread of life and quench our thirst with the wine of salvation. Strengthen us with this meal of grace so that we may share the good news of your rising for the world. Amen. Please be seated for a few brief announcements. Again, welcome to everyone that has joined us this morning, either in person or online. We're glad that you're part of our life together. 
and that we walk together in partnership in our ministry. You may have noticed that uh, we're going to be doing a little celebrating this morning as well. At the second service, we're celebrating uh, our high school graduates as uh, they make their way uh, across the stage and then out into God's great big world where, uh, wherever God will lead them. You'll see their stories on the insert. And I encourage you to read them. And if you know them, uh, go and uh, congratulate them, greet them in the name of Christ, encourage them along the way. Um, also, if you don't know them, uh, but you stick around <clears throat> as we're honoring our graduates uh, at the second service, uh, please greet them in the name of Christ. A couple of other things that we want you to be aware of, our, uh, our parenting Bible study uh, is uh, occurring um, every other Sunday at 9 uh, 9.30 in the church library. Now the hard part is, I don't know if it's an other Sunday or not yet, so um, uh, we'll have to just check the last schedule on that. Uh, the other thing is we have a writer's group that's backed by popular demand. If you uh, are interested in writing um, and want to come and it's kind of a free writing opportunity, uh, you're encouraged to do that. Um, also, uh, join us uh, for day camp and VBS. There's sign-up information for that. And speaking of sign-ups, uh, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but we need people to sign up for things. We are in this what? together. And so that means we need uh, to have people that are willing to sign up to do slides or to usher or to altar guild uh, and uh, to greet and to welcome and to be a part of our life together. So I encourage you to do it. Now we have a wonderful person that is going to be calling you uh, and asking you and uh, you are allowed to say no, but if you say no, be prepared to be asked what else would you like to do? Because we are in this together, and we thank God for your partnership. Now I invite you to please stand for the final blessing. May Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. And we sing our sending song. to all. Together we should the love of Jesus. Go in peace, live and share the good news of our risen Lord. We will. Thanks be to God.